Hi everyone, it's Sainan once again. Welcome to episode 4 of the Falklands Malvinas War. Today we'll talk about the two most complex moments of the war. The sinking of the Argentinian cruiser General Belgrano and the British destroyer HMS Sheffield. After the first Black Buck raid on 30th of April, the Argentines knew that the British task force was close, so they decided to send their fleet to destroy the Royal Navy at sea. From the north, they sent the aircraft carrier 25 de Mayo, two Type 42 destroyers and three Exocet equipped corvettes. From the south, they sent two World War II style destroyers armed with Exocet missiles and the pride of the Argentinian Navy, the cruiser General Belgrano. The Belgrano was the former cruiser USS Phoenix, one of the few ships present at Pearl Harbor that survived the Japanese attack and then transferred to Argentina in 1951. By 1982, however, it was more than 40 years old and could only achieve a maximum speed of 18 knots, but was extremely well armed with 15 155mm or 6 inch guns, which could obliterate a British aircraft carrier in seconds. Some reports say that the ship was also armed with Exocet missile launchers, but they were fake, made of wood. However, the Belgrand was silently followed by the British nuclear submarine HMS Conqueror, in close communication with London. On 1st of May, Admiral Juan Lombardo ordered all Argentine naval units to seek out the British task force around the Falklands and launch a massive attack the following day, performing a classic pincer movement. Belgrano, which was outside of the exclusion zone, was ordered southeast and then to wait on that area because the 25 de Mayo group arrived late to the meeting point to the north. A S-2 tracker plane of the 25 de Mayo did locate the invincible aircraft carrier and the ship tried to launch an attack against the British with their fully loaded A-4 Skyhawks, but the lack of wind forced them to cancel the attack. This was a huge frustration for the pilots because strong winds are always present on the South Atlantic. If the A-4s had taken off, it would have been the first carrier naval battle since the Second World War. Lombardo's signal was intercepted by the British and the ship was considered a threat, and Thatcher gave the order to sink the ship. On HMS Conqueror, the commander received the news. The weather by then had gotten much worse. Of the three torpedoes fired, two hit Belgrano. One blew up the entire bow of the ship, but the bulkhead behind held the water. The second torpedo hit the middle of the ship, destroying the engines and cutting all power needed for the water pumps, or to send a distress signal. She started to list and Captain Bonzo ordered the crew to abandon the ship, which was done without panic. You can see him here in this photo with another officer. He was the last man to abandon the ship. The two destroyers escorting the ship were miles ahead, unaware of what happened, and they didn't see the distress uh, rockets fired because of the bad weather. The third torpedo missed and continued its run. It's possible that the torpedo either hit the destroyer Bouchard, but failed to explode, or the warhead exploded just a few meters from the ship. The British left the area and one hour later sent a message to London. Because of the miscommunication between the ships, the surviving crew of the ship stayed on the rafts for more than 30 hours, with huge waves hitting them as well as extremely glacial temperatures. But in the end, a total of 323 men died, many due to exposure. One tabloid newspaper, The Sun, published this famous but shocking gotcha cover. The Argentines were shocked because of this, and the Navy ordered all ships to return immediately to the base. The ship was attacked outside of the exclusion zone, but the British claimed that days before they informed that they would attack any ship that was considered a threat. The response would come from the naval aviation branch of the Argentinian Navy. The British placed ahead of the task force three Type 42 destroyers to detect the approaching Argentinian planes, giving them enough time for the Harriers to take off and intercept. On the morning of 4th of May, an old SP-2H Neptune patrol plane located part of the British task force and relayed that info to the Navy High Command. 
Two superintend art planes took off, each armed with one deadly Exocet missile. They were refueled during the flight by a KC-130 Hercules of the Argentinian Air Force. The target was HMS Sheffield, the first Type 42 missile destroyer built. The older Type 965 radar that the ship had was unable to locate low-altitude flying missiles, which was crucially exploited by the Argentinians. HMS Glasgow detected the planes approaching, but the message arrived too late to save Sheffield. Twenty men died because of this attack. It's not sure if the warhead of the missile exploded or not. It has often been said that the warhead failed to explode and the remaining fuel inside the missile caused the fire that burned the ship. It's now believed that the warhead did indeed explode. Sheffield was abandoned and sunk days later while being towed. Winter was approaching and the British were forced to make a landfall, because conditions were becoming unsustainable. Without full aerial control, it was extremely risky. But they had to do it now. And now a personal opinion. In these videos I talk about history, but let's not forget that thousands of men died on these two ships. Men that, in other circumstances, might have been friends. But war is war. To remember them, both nations made monuments dedicated to the fallen, so that their sacrifice wasn't in vain. Did you enjoy this video? If so, please subscribe to my YouTube page. To know more about the LEGO models that I made, please visit my Flickr webpage. Thank you and see you next time!